Hi, today we're going to have a little look at this alarm panel which I'm installing in my own house. So this is the Premier Elite 88 from Texacom and looking through the technical bulletins on the website there's one particular one that caught my eye and that's related to the AC power supply recommendation. So essentially what it's saying is you'd be best off trying to install this on its own circuit from the consumer unit um, because certain loads such as inductive loads, air conditioning, that kind of thing on a same circuit as the alarm system may cause the alarm to malfunction or false trigger or that kind of thing really which in my opinion is pretty crap it suggests that they've got an issue with the switch mode power supply um, so there's a switch mode power supply at the top there that you can see on the older panels it used to be a straightforward transformer and this has basically been introduced since that switch mode power supply became a standard item and it suggests that they've got a problem with the conducted immunity and you can see, it, actually, if you have a look underneath the switch mode power supply, there is actually a choke just here um, on the wires going to the PCB. And there's also a bit of filtering on the top as well. And then also another thing which I found is that they may be changing the design of the power supply. So you can see the one on the left is the one that I've got. You can see the, uh, the choke that's on the output of the wires. The one on the right doesn't have those and they must have redesigned the um, power supply just to accommodate some additional filtering inside. So what I've done is um, I have bought one of these little uh, filters so I'm probably going to stick one of these at the top just as a mitigation to try and stop anything happening but it will have its own circuit from the consumer unit but in my opinion this is all pretty poor really and it suggests that really any common mode noise is just going to make its way straight through the power supply onto the board and then make it very simple for the device to false trigger. So let's have a little look at how this all works. Right, so what we've got is an alarm system that can accept up to 88 different sensors on individual zones. You can see at the bottom here, we've actually only got eight that can be wired onto the panel itself. And then at the bottom left here, we've got the network terminals, and that goes off to devices like this wireless expander. And then I've got another expander here, which I need to install which allows up to eight additional wired zones. So the way your passive infrared sensors or door contacts or that kind of thing typically work is there'll be a normally closed contact and then if it detects movement, that contact will open up and the alarm will know that someone has entered the zone. Additionally, there's a tamper contact which may exist on sensors or it might just be um, linked out, but if you cut the wire, it breaks that link and then presents an open circuit and that also gets read by the alarm. But in that case, the tamper is protected all the time. So if anyone cuts a wire at any point, the alarm goes off. So that's sort of the traditional wiring method and you'd end up with four wires at the alarm panel. But an alternate wiring method, which is more commonly used because it's a little bit more secure, is called end of line. And basically you end up with only two wires connected to the alarm panel. And then across the alarm terminal, there'll be a resistor. And in series with the alarm and the tamper wires, there'll also be another resistor and then it goes back to the panel. And the idea is that it's a little bit more difficult for you to defeat if you manage to gain access to the wiring because you may not know exactly what resistors are used in the design. And if it uh, doesn't detect these exact resistances with some tolerance around it to include tolerancing for the wires, then it knows that someone's attempted to uh, link out the wires and, and defeat the system. So it also raises a tamper alarm. Now, unlike the older alarm systems, this one actually just reads voltages with an ADC, and that's potentially why this system is a little bit sensitive to mains born noise. So what we have is a situation where we've got a 4.7K resistor and a 2.2K resistor on the panel. One end is connected to zero volts, and you can see we've got this sort of resistor ladder, and then we've got one wire going off to a HEF4051 analog multiplexer, and then that basically just goes off to our ADC with a pull-up resistor. So we just end up with a voltage divider. So if uh, the alarm contact is closed and the tamper contact is closed, you end up with a short circuit across the 4K7, and then you just see 2.2K at this point, and then depending on the ratio between the 2.2K and this pull-up resistor, you get a voltage, and that gets read in by the panel. And then obviously if the alarm contact opens, you see 6.9 kilo ohms. And if the tamper or if the cable's cut, then it becomes open circuit and this just floats up to V ref. And all of the channels are multiplexed, so it'll just read each channel in turn fairly quickly uh, just by this multiplexer, which is why there's only eight zones on the board, uh, because there's just one of these 40, 
8 channel multiplexers on the PCB. So why might we be sensitive to mains born noise? Well effectively what we've got is a system whereby we've got an AC supply and the noise that we're probably talking about here is common mode noise. So that's going to appear on both the phase and the neutral conductors into the power supply on the alarm. And that very easily makes its way through the power supply if you don't have adequate supply filtering. And that means that you're going to see those same spikes on the 12 volt rails and the logic supplies within the alarm. And then we've got all of these wires going out to all of our sensors, so they might be really quite long cables. And they've all got capacitances to mains ground, they've got lots of inductance because they're quite long. And basically what it means is we might see a very short duration spike on the power supplies inside the device, but the voltages that we're reading back may not have the spike at the same time because of the capacitances and inductances, which means that it may be possible for it to false trigger, particularly if uh, something is very noisy on the AC supply and we're seeing lots of noise. So one of the things that they suggest is installing the device on its own circuit, and that sort of gets around some of the problems, although you may still get some noise on the uh, supply wires. The other thing that they suggest that you might want to do is install an EMI filter. So that's that little box that I've got and most of them have some kind of circuit similar to this. So we've got some capacitances across the AC waveform. We've got a common mode choke to try and stop that common mode noise getting through into the switch mode power supply. And then we've also got some capacitors here which are conducting any noise on top of the AC waveform right back down to mains earth. And that suggests that by the time it gets to the switch mode power supply, you know, the majority of the noise is going to be dissipated. It depends a little bit on your EMI filter selection. Um, but uh, yeah, generally speaking, you're going to get rid of most of the noise that you're talking about. The interesting thing to note is these alarm panels do have a 12 volt battery inside them, but that isn't sufficient to get around that problem. So we do have the DC inlet here. And on this particular panel, there is some electronics here to allow it to turn off the DC input to the power supply so that it can check that the 12 volt battery is working properly. So I think every day it disconnects the AC supply from the PCB and runs itself from the battery for a few seconds to work out uh, whether the battery is in a good state of charge and also uh, that it's working properly. So there's a bit of electronics there, but even though we've got a very stable 12 volt supply, that noise still is going to end up on top of all of the power supplies on this board um, and just makes it very susceptible to noise. So it's a little bit crappy really. These um, power supplies have been on the market for about uh, five or six years, I think. It's only now that they've started to release the updated version. Um, obviously, they noticed that there was some problem because you can see here we had this common mode choke on the AC supply, which is just sort of wound onto a uh, toroidal coil. And then from the DC supply to the PCB, there was also this long choke uh, which sat on the wires. So they've clearly been aware of this kind of issue for quite a long time. Um, and it suggests that it does meet the appropriate standards, but uh, it's a little bit crappy really, and um, it'd be interesting to uh, open up one of the new ones to see what they've done and whether they've just incorporated a proper uh, AC filter inside the power supply. So there's not really a lot on these PCBs, and actually the design is really quite old. Uh, here's our 4051, which goes off to our eight zones, and you can see here uh, we've got uh, the little pairs of resistors that are across each zone. Then we've got uh, a couple of EEPROM chips for all of the settings that you store. So uh, there's quite a bit of programming that can be done on these boards and this stores all of the programming. Then we've got some open collector transistors and various things for outputs. So we've got our outputs to our external sounders, uh, we've got a speaker output and then we've got some general purpose outputs for controlling uh, other equipment. We've got a DTMF tone generator if you have a dialer plugged in. And then we've got some serial ports and these two connect off to this um, SmartCom which allows it to connect to the internet and uh, allows you to remote set it and read the status and that kind of thing. This has a really powerful processor in. Uh, this is literally, I think it's just a little 8-bit processor, a really old one, so uh, this really needs an update at some point. There's no real reason for this to be external. They could redesign the whole board and, uh, and integrate everything onto here. And then you can see here there's not really a lot going on with the power supplies either, so we've got our regulators and our switch which allows us to turn off the power here, our battery comes in and we've got a couple of polyfusers. Um, we've got a little button here which allows you to kickstart the power. So this is part of the problem with uh, being able to switch off the power um, to test the battery. When you first turn on the device it doesn't have any power so this sort of shorts out the switch up here and allows it to turn on and uh, start running the device. 
So here we've got one of the keypads and you can see it's a really nice design. This connects to that network interface which is a serial interface. There's one wire for transmit and one wire for receive and then we've got plus and minus 12 volts. And that connects to all of these kind of peripherals, so the keypads, the expanders and that kind of thing. But uh, this is a really nice design. It's got a big LCD on the front. It's got an RFID reader so you can put your tag across it instead of having to type in your code. Uh, but you can see that um, we probably have a very similar potential problem because you've got things like light switches and we've got the wires which uh, both go up to the ceiling and then off to the alarm panel. So it'd be very easy to get uh, crosstalk between the two parallel wires. And also these are brick and plaster walls so um, you get quite a lot of capacitance between the wires and mains earth because although brick and plaster and that isn't that conductive there is some impedance to mains earth so you do get quite a lot of capacitance on those wires. So this is the wireless expander which isn't connected up to the panel yet but that connects via just the four terminals up here to connect to the network interface at the bottom uh, but this all runs at 868 megahertz. So that wireless expander connects to devices like these that I've got in my hand. So this is a wireless contact and this has two zones also built in to connect wired devices to. And it also interfaces with things like this miniature contact here which just has a reed switch and a tamper switch on it. But what I actually want to do is take this apart and integrate it with these bean pairs which have just arrived from eBay. And uh, I, they're on the floor on a towel because I've just taken them apart and washed them because they were covered in cobwebs. They're quite expensive so I bought these second hand but actually it turns out they're way overkill. These are absolutely massive and it wasn't very well advertised as to what they are but these are actually the 100 meter and the 50 meter versions. All I actually wanted to do is buy one to go across the front gate which is about five or six meters in width. So these are massively overkill. I didn't really realize the size. It wasn't listed very well and not many people bidded on these as a result. So we've got these big infrared sensors They've all been washed and um, they're drying at the moment. I've blown them out with a compressor. We've got all of the internals here. So we're going to do a video very shortly on these to have a look what's inside. One of them did say it had a fault, but uh, just on the tamper circuit. But uh, these aren't going to form part of the intruder circuit. It's just um, I'd like it to make the alarm chime when someone walked through the gate. So I'll probably do some videos on those sensors very shortly. But uh, yeah, it's just a little note on common mode noise and... EMC compliance because it seems very strange that uh, they're getting complaints now but it managed to pass the EMC testing supposedly. Um, those EMC tests with conducted immunity are usually quite rigorous and it's quite apparent quite quickly if you do the electrical fast transient testing whether you've got a problem with noise getting into your system through the power supply. So I hope you found that video useful and until next time thanks for watching.